Good morning to you and to those that are with us on social media. Um, you uh, welcome as well those that watch us on, on, on uh, social media and the rest of us. During the week, there's uh, every now and again we we put uh, sometimes just a snippet of, of the message, sometimes just uh, some other things on on our YouTube channel. Our YouTube channel is Kainos South Africa, so you're welcome to go to Kainos South Africa and uh, and see some of the. Sometimes it's a one minute, sometimes it's five minutes, and uh, whatever uh, we 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 put on there. All right, let's pray together and let's get going today. Father, we thank you for this new day. We thank you for a day that we can experience the fullness of your joy today. And as we open up our hearts, as we do every Sunday, to receive your word, in the same time we open up our hearts to receive the fullness of what you want to give us in this day. So we bless you and we thank you that your presence is here with us today, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now just to recap a little bit, we're still in January, so let's just recap a little bit. I'm not going to take too much time to recap, but our word for the year is from uh, Psalm 24, verse 7. It's not on the board, but uh, Psalm 24, verse 7, that says, Lift up your gates, throw open your doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord God. Uh, the Lord God Almighty, mighty in battle. Uh, the Lord God Almighty. Thank you. My wife is my, uh, uh, the rest of the Bible for me here today. So, uh, um, that is the word. And uh, our, our whole focus, and especially now in, in, this, in this time in January, February, our focus is to open up our hearts to open up our lives, to open up our families, and of course to open up Kainos so that the King of Glory may come in, that we will experience His presence. And we explained in the last few weeks that there's, uh, we experience God's presence in two different ways. The one way is where we, we just know because of the Word of God and what God's Word says that His presence is in us and by faith we accept His presence with us. But the second way is to experience His tangible presence. And that's why we've been saying it's so important to come together as a body of Christ, because in the time together, sitting around the Word, and then also in the time of worship, we can experience together God's tangible uh, uh, presence. Last week was an amazing time together, and last week we really experienced God uh, uh, in his, in his presence, being in His presence, and, and leaving this place with the knowledge and the, and the experience of God's presence with us. So today I want to just uh, focus on one of the, the areas of God's presence, and that is God's joy. In Psalm 16 verse 11, uh, David writes, he says, you make, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, and are pleasures forevermore. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. Um, a few years back, I was uh, uh, discussing this with God. Because I wanted to know that His presence is with me. And we don't always experience a... And the, the tangible presence of God in the sense of we experience Him right here. Sometimes we do, but most of the time we don't. And I was saying to God, how do I know that your presence is with me? And He took me to the scripture, this specific scripture, and He said, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And He said, look into your heart. Do you have joy? If you don't have joy, you don't have my presence. Because in my presence, there's fullness of joy. Outside of my presence, there's no joy. In my presence, there's fullness of joy. Um, now, there's a difference between joy and happiness. Okay, we've explained this before. Let me explain this again. You're happy 
on your birthday and at Christmas. When someone gives you a gift, you're happy. When you buy a new car, you're happy. When you uh, experience something that someone just blesses you, you're happy. That's just happiness. Joy is something inside of us despite the circumstances around us. So sometimes it's not going so well. Sometimes they break into our workshop and they steal all our things. And we, 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 we want to become depressed. Sometimes sickness comes over our body and we want to become depressed. We want to come to the place where we say, this is not fair, it shouldn't happen to me, I'm trying to serve God, I'm walking this road with God, why is these things happening to me? And we lose our joy, which means we lose the presence of God in our lives. But sometimes when we go through these difficult times, and we focus on who God is, and His promises in His Word that He will never leave us, nor despise us. He will never push us aside. When we, when we understand that, suddenly we start feeling inside of us a peace and a joy inside of us, even though the circumstances around us are not good. And when we feel His joy inside of us, we can, we can call out and say, Thank you, Lord. I experience your presence because your word says, In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Joy is not determined by outside things, happenings, circumstances. Joy is decided by the Holy Spirit inside of us that has placed inside of us a fountain, a fountain that bubbles up inside of us despite what's happening around us. And the Holy Spirit flows through us and there's joy in my heart and I know His presence is with me. So, in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. The fruit of God's presence is joy. The fruit of God's presence is joy. I want to read this to you in a, in a, in a few different translations, just two uh, different translations as well. In, Isaiah, in Psalm 16 verse 11, uh, the same scripture, in the God's Word translation it says, You make the path of life known to me. Complete joy is in your presence. Pleasures are by your side forevermore. Complete joy is in your presence. So just check yourself now, because at the end of the service, we're going to pray for you. <laughs> we're going to pray for each other for the fullness of joy, for the complete joy, because the complete joy is in your presence. All right? In the Good News Bible, it says, You will show me the path that leads to life. Your presence fills me with joy. And brings me pleasure forevermore. So if you're going through a tough time today, and, and January 2024, not January 2023, not January 2025, January 2024 is and was a month that many of us experienced many challenges. We experienced challenges in our health, we experience challenges in, in our finances. We experience challenges in our work situations. We experience challenges wherever. We, many of us have experienced challenges that we're thinking, if the year starts like this, I don't know how we're going to end. Now, I've got good news for you. If the year starts like this, and despite what is happening, we can experience the fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord. Can you imagine if you experience the fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord now while we're going through, maybe you might be going through a difficult situation. Uh, 
and you feel and experience the presence of God, can you imagine what December is going to be like when we're through the year and we've come through more than victorious? Can you imagine the joy then and the presence of God then? So just hold on. We'll get there to the fullness. And we're already at the fullness of joy. We're going to get there to the overflowing of joy in our lives. All right. Nehemiah, Nehemiah 8, verse 10 to 11. Uh, and we know the story of Nehemiah that to rebuild, uh, God sent him to rebuild the, the walls of, of, uh, uh, of Jerusalem and uh, uh, to, to, to uh, rebuild the, the, the different gates and, and and to next week we will be speaking a little bit about the gates. Uh, and, uh, and then when they were finished, Nehemiah and Ezra came and they said, let's get back to reading the law to the people. And Ezra the priest, he took the, the scrolls and he started reading the law to the people. And we read, and Nehemiah who was the governor and Ezra the priest and scribe and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine, and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, if the joy of the Lord is my strength, does the strength come from me being joyful, or does the strength come from me that in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy? And so if the joy of the Lord is my strength, it means His presence is in my life. It means I've opened up and my, my, my life for the presence of God to enter in and to move with me. And, and, and then... The joy of the Lord is my strength. Isn't that amazing? So, your joy rests on God's joy. Your joy rests on God's joy. In other words, your joy rests on God's presence in your life. Let me just read this verse 10 again. It says, uh, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now it's very interesting when we read the scripture. The, 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 scripture, the joy of the Lord is your strength. We can read it in different ways. We can read it firstly. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Or we can read it. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Where do we put the, 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 the uh, uh, emphasis? I was going to say the accent, but the accent wouldn't have worked here. That's Afrikaans. So, the joy, where do we put the, 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 the emphasis? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Or the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Or maybe we will say, the joy of the Lord is your strength. But I believe that uh, the way we should read this is the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, I've been thinking a lot about this over the past weeks, and I've been thinking a lot about this over the past years already. I've been thinking, maybe we, we read the scripture wrong. Maybe we're so focused on the joy that we miss out on the Lord. Maybe we're so focused on the strength that we get from the joy, that we so focused to get the joy so that we can have strength that we miss out 
on the Lord. Maybe we're so focused on uh, to get joy for me, and we focus on the joy of the Lord is my strength or your strength, and I'm taking it for my strength, and it's about me, and we miss out on the Lord. What if, and I'm not going to try and be theological now, okay? I'm just going to ask you the question, what if this scripture says, when I give God joy, I receive His strength? What if the scripture says, the joy of the Lord, when I bring Him joy, He fills me with strength? Okay, some of you are thinking about it. Some of you, nah, I'm not sure. Some of you are saying, yeah, it makes a little bit of sense. It makes a lot of sense to me. When my children bring me joy, it's easy to bless them. Isn't it? When they wash Madeleine's car, then it's easy to look at them and go, wow, you've just added a few points to us blessing you. You understand? So what, what, what if, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to be theological, I'm just suggesting, what happens if, if we can change the scripture, not change the scripture, if we can change our mindset about the scripture, that our focus is not receiving joy from the Lord, but giving joy to the Lord, and then receiving His strength. That would be something, won't it? The joy of the Lord is my strength. When I bring Him joy, I receive the strength. Just suggestion. Okay. There's so many things that make us unhappy at the moment in life. Without being political, our government, government makes us unhappy. Can you, not be, can you be unpolitical and say that? I don't know. But anyway, uh, 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 our government can make us unhappy. Our relationships around us can make us unhappy. Our financial situation can make us unhappy. But God is not saying, how happy or unhappy are you? He's saying, I want to give you joy. Because when I give you joy, you will have strength to carry on. Because my joy is connected to my presence. Because in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. So if I give you my joy, you will experience my presence. Where you experience my presence, you will experience my joy. And when you experience my joy, you will experience my presence. I mean, what more do you want? And that's what God is saying to us. God really does delight in us. Did you know that God enjoys uh, some of us, and, and maybe not some of you sitting here, maybe some of you sitting here, who knows, but so, some people have this picture of God that when I mess up, He's standing with a pole ready to knock my ankles off my feet. He's ready to punish me every time I make a mistake. And we've got this idea and this picture of God that God is, is, is a, a father that is looking for our mistakes so that he can sort me out. Did you know that God is our father that is looking for our joy in our lives so that he can enjoy us? And when we don't have he wants to give us joy if we will just open up our hearts and allow the King of Glory to come in. He will fill us with His joy and we will experience His joy in our lives. 
That's what he wants to do. In Zeph uh, Zephaniah, some of you don't even know there's a book Zephaniah in the Bible. Okay? But in the book Zephaniah, it's a prophetic book, one of the smaller uh, or minor prophets. Uh, and he writes in Zephaniah 3.17, the Lord speaks. And the Lord says, the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. Now listen to this. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. Now he doesn't say, we will exalt over the Lord with joy. He doesn't say, we will exalt over the Lord with loud singing. God is standing and he's looking at us and, he's, and he starts singing a love song to us. He starts singing a song just because we've chosen to be his child. And he sings over us and he enjoys our fellowship and he wants to be with us because he enjoys us. And the question we ask is, how can a holy God delight in me? He can, because he wants to. I want to tell you, God reminded me of something in my life that, uh, <laughs> um, it's a little bit embarrassing, N not very embarrassing, but just embarrassing for me to tell you this story because of my own background and uh, maybe my own religious, religious hold that the enemy had over me. But earlier years, my parents-in-law, they uh, had a place uh, in, in, in the, at the south coast, um, in South Broome, and they, they, they moved there basically, they had a few places, but that was the main place where they, where they lived. But in fe February, in, in the time, end of January to February, uh, it was in uh, KwaZulu-Natal, it's very humid, it's very warm, my father-in-law struggled just uh, w w with humidity, and so they would go to the Cape, more the south, south, uh, uh, southern Cape um, area. They would go there, and they would go there for a few weeks to have holiday. He could do it, and he, and he would enjoy just uh, traveling, going, moving from place to place, looking around, seeing all the different areas in, in the southern Cape area. And uh, because we as a family, we were homeschooling Joshua, so we were not bound by school terms and uh, quarters and, 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 and holidays and all these kind of things. So my father-in-law would invite us, come join us for at least one week of the holiday. We couldn't always take more than that uh, uh, in ministry. So we would then drive down to the south to, 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 to the Southern Cape area, and we would join them somewhere along the way. We would join them, and we would spend a week on holiday with them. And it was always uh, different because we were always moving. Every year we would move to a different area, a different place. Sometimes it would be to Plettenberg Bay. Sometimes it would be to, to, to Neisner. Sometimes it would be uh, just different places we would move to and just have holiday. And he would take us and we would enjoy, we would eat just about every meal we would eat either in the restaurant or at the hotel. So it was this... Uh, different kind of holiday than, than a tent and making a fire to put some buddhavos on. So uh, that was one, uh, one week in the year we would be with them. And so uh, we would come to a hotel and my father-in-law would say, he would book us into the hotel 
and and uh, for anything let me just say this <laughs> for anything if i suggested to him whether it was for a for a cold drink or whether it was for a whatever and i suggested to him uh, dad i'll pay he would become furious not just angry he would become furious like what's your case we taking you on holiday what's your case so we would come to the hotel and we would be booked into our our rooms or our place our rooms in the in the hotel and and then uh, he would say if you need anything pick up the phone and call room service now you just got to understand something that wasn't my background my dad, uh, uh, he, he, he took his sense and he turned them around three times before he even, before he even decided what he's going to do with it, even when he, when he knew he had to do it. My dad, uh, uh, amazing man, and, and, I, and I loved my dad right through, but he was a stingy man. <laughs> so uh, um, that was just how it was. And if we needed something, we would ask, and, he, and it, it would take him sometimes a few days to decide, can he afford this or can't he afford this? And I'm sure most of the times he could. My dad wasn't that poor, but I, I'm sure he could, but he still had to decide, is this priority enough to pay for this or not? Especially when it was something that was just uh, a luxury. Or... So that was my background. So now we're on holiday with my father-in-law and uh, he's just paying for everything. So we would go to the restaurant and my background would kick in and so when we ordered something, I wouldn't look at what was on the menu, I would look at what was the prices and then move to the menu and then decide if this was worth it because I never I grew up I never wanted to have anybody think that I would misuse their their goodness to me so I would I would eat so I would just first listen what do they want and I just make sure that mine would be cheaper one time my, we, we were on holiday with them and uh, my father-in-law took us and he took me to the, to, the, um, to the shops. We were all together and he said, I'm going to buy you because at that stage, I, 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 I still do, I, I loved wearing just these golf t-shirts. It uh, 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 was always comfortable for me. So he, he took me to the shops to buy me some tops some golf t-shirts because he knew I liked golf t-shirts and so we walked into the shop I remember it was still Woolworths and we walked past all the normal Woolworths stuff and we moved at that time there was Super Sport it was a brand so we moved to the Super Sport brand which was the expensive clothes and he said, choose. <laughs> so, I'm feeling a little bit embarrassed, but uh, okay. And I, and I went and I chose. I chose a red uh, 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 golfer's super sport t-shirt. And I only choose red. I don't like red, but Madeleine likes red, so she looks at me and I don't look at her. So I choose red so that she can look at me. But anyway, I chose a red, red one. And I said, yeah, thanks, Dad. I'll take this one. And he looked at me and he said, take some more. And I replied, I don't think it's necessary. I'm okay. One's okay. And if you knew Auntie Ruth, my, my father-in-law, 
He never always said something, but you could read on his face. When, when he wasn't happy. And so I read on his face he wasn't happy, but I didn't know how to make him happy because I'm trying to make him happy so he doesn't spend all his money on me. So he walked to where all the t-shirts were, or all the, the, the golf shirts were, and he took three different ones, extra, and he put them together and he went to pay for them and he gave it to me. I, I was happy with one. He gave me four. And I was feeling this, this, this uh, I don't want him ever to think I'm misusing his goodness towards me. I'd never want him to think that, that uh, uh, whatever he, he, he gives me, I'm going to take more and more and more. Because I'm his son-in-law. I'm not his son. I'm his son-in-law. Even though he said he treats us all as sons, in my mind, I'm the son-in-law. And the son-in-law must not misuse his father-in-law's goodness. But he wasn't that happy when I tried to be nice. He wanted me to take as much as I wanted because he could afford to. And money wasn't his issue, money was my issue. And so we, uh, we would have holiday and I would always just try to be very considerate about not spending too much and, and whatever. If he says, order something on, uh, 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 through, uh, through room service, if I wanted something, I would rather walk down to the cafe and go buy it myself than put it onto his bowl. Because somewhere the bowl is going to come to him and he's going to see all the stuff that we took. And you see, a few weeks ago, two weeks, this last week and a half, somewhere, God started speaking to me. And he reminded me, my father-in-law is not alive anymore. Um, he, uh, he was an amazing man. His last wish before he died was, his last wish was, Joshua and Mariska, at, for their wedding, he said, even if I have to crawl from Neisner, I'm going to be at the wedding. And he had the opportunity to be there with all his children, all his grandchildren, and at that stage he had one great-grandchild, and they were all together with him before he passed on to be with the Lord. But God reminded me this week about that, those times. And God said to me, My problem was, I thought that my father-in-law was doing and buying things for me and uh, taking us on holiday together for me. I thought he was doing it for me. I thought he was blessing us for me or for Madeleine or for us. He was blessing us so that we could be blessed. And God showed me this last week and a half. He said, you missed it all along. He was never doing it for you. He was doing it for himself. He loved to see you being blessed. And he could be the blesser. He loved to see that that. When he blessed us, whether it was with a meal, whether it was with taking us on holiday together, whether it was with a golf t-shirt, whether it was with whatever, it was all about him. He did it for himself because he got blessed, because he was happy, because he was excited to be able to share with us. And I was thinking it's all about me. He's doing this so that I can be blessed. He was never doing it for me. He was doing it for himself. So that he could be blessed by giving to us. 
And God spoke to me and God said, your father-in-law was rich enough that to spend a thousand rand on you wouldn't make him poor. To spend 10,000 rand on you wouldn't make him poor. To spend 100,000 on you wouldn't make him poor. He had more than enough. And you worried about the 100 rand that he's spending on you. And he's not worried if it's 100, if it's 1,000, if it's 10,000, if it's 100,000. It doesn't bother him because he wants to bless us because by blessing us, he gets blessed. And now that I'm a father, and now that I'm a father of a married couple, I understand that more than ever before. And so now, when I can bless, I want to bless without them saying, oh, that's not necessary. So I'm warning you. It's, when I bless you, it's, it's necessary. For me. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, do you hear what I'm saying? Because as a father, our joy we get when we can bless our children. That's joy for us when we can do things for our children so that they can be blessed. It's joy for us when we get in the car and travel from here to Sasselberg for one 80 meter race just to be with one of my children. It's joy for me. I will do that if I can because it brings joy. It's not about them. It's about me. You, 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 you hear? And God is saying, My joy, the joy of the Lord, I want to give to you so that you can be strengthened. My presence, I want to give to you. It's not about you. Stop thinking that everything and the world turns around you. It's not about you. It's about me as God that wants to give you my presence. I want to give you, I want to give you my joy. I want to give you, I want to bless you. I want to do things for you. I want to make you happy, not just happy. I want to make you joyous. And even when the trials come, and even when the difficulties come, and even when all these different, different circumstances come in your life, I want to fill you with my joy and my presence because in the presence of the Lord there's fullness of joy I want to give it to you because when I see you being joyful it brings joy to me because the joy of the Lord is the joy that you bring to me when I give to you I get it's unfold with the joy because it's my joy that I'm filled with because of you I hope this makes sense because this is so important that we must stop thinking that God does things for me. He's doing it for himself. Because he's God. He wants to be filled with his joy. His own joy. He doesn't need me to be filled with joy. But he enjoys being filled with joy because of me. He is joy in, me, in himself. He doesn't need to do anything to, be the, to have the joy of the Lord. It's his joy. But man, when he gives it to us and he fills us with the joy and he fills us with, our, with his presence and he sees the joy coming out of us, that joy fills him and, and, and it's all about him. And we think, oh, God is so good, he's blessing me. God is good to bless you, but he's not blessing you for you. He's blessing you for his kingdom. He's blessing you for his joy. He's blessing you for someone else. And, and, and we've said this before, but God did not save you for you. He's, when he saved you, he had someone else in mind that you could reach. Isn't that exciting? Morco, can I tell you a story? Let's go. Morkel was on a grade 8 camp this weekend. And he enjoyed the camp. They had a good time. They ziplined and all these kind of things. They thought they were going to go there to be where the, where the 
uh, grade twelves is going to mess them up for the week weekend uh, or for the few days. And actually, they just had a great time. They did have some uh, stuff where they had to walk in the dark and do PT in the in the middle of the night and those kind of things. But they had a good time. But one of the boys that was with them was going through his own personal struggle. It had nothing to do with the camp. It had nothing to do. It was just their own, his own personal struggle. And and and. Uh, 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 they found him crying when everybody was laughing. He was sitting one side crying, etc., etc. Long story. I'm not going to tell the whole story. And they got together and they said, the, the, the group of boys got together and they said, what are we going to do? Must we go call one of the teachers? And one of the guys said, I'm not going to mention just no, uh, a lot of names, but... Uh, uh, they're also a part of, of Kainos, praise God. But he, he, he said, let's pray for him. So they prayed for him. And he was okay. The next day, he was back in his state, and he was back again, and whatever. And eventually he said to them, I, 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 Morco can probably tell the story better than I can tell it, but uh, eventually they said, I, he said, I also want Jesus. And Markle had the opportunity to lead one of his friends to Christ on a camp. The first one of many. Why? Because when God saved him, God wasn't thinking about him. God was thinking about another boy that somewhere he's going to meet and he's going to have a need and he's going to be filled with the presence of God so that he can come and speak to this guy and tell him, this is what you have to do. Let's pray together. Let's get, let, let's get you to a place where you can invite Christ into your life. And, and when that was finished, there was another few guys that said, but we're not sure we're ready. And so they all prayed together. I, I, you, you, you understand what I'm saying? It wasn't about Marco. I'm bragging about him because I'm his father. I'm bragging about him. Brings me joy. But it wasn't about him. It was about God's purpose to bring joy into someone else's life and he was filled with joy because of someone else's life that changed and, and the whole group was filled with joy because there was a few of them that said, me too, me too, me too. God does not bless us so that we can be, so that we can say, oh, God is so good and we sing the song, God is so good and it's a wonderful song because we must sing it because he is good. But sometimes when we sing, God is so good, He's so good to me, and our focus is on me. God is so good to me, so that my joy can fill His heart, so that He can be joyous about His children. The joy of the Lord is my strength. But it's God's joy that is my strength. Because in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. Let me just finish this last, uh, uh, in the next service I'll do the other stuff. But let me just give you this scripture. Ephesians 3, verse 14 to 21. Ephesians 3, verse 14 to 21. Listen to what Paul writes. He says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. Do you understand that you are named? Your name is, is your surname. No, I'm, 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 I'll confuse you. Your, your, your surname is con not your surname on earth. Your surname in heaven is connected to God's name because you're a son or daughter of God. Okay? So he says, uh, uh, from whom every family in heaven on earth is named. Now listen, that according to the riches of his glory, not the riches of his bank. Everybody wants the riches of his bank. The riches of his glory, he may grant to you to be strengthened 
Where does our strength come? The joy of the Lord is my strength. To be strengthened with power through His Spirit in your inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, listen now, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. He wants to fill you with His fullness of His presence. This is a, a, a sermon on its own, so I better just read it. Verse 20. Now to Him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think according to the power at work within us. Stop confusing the scripture with money. Yeah. Oh, I need to get finances from God. I'm going to pray for, for, for 10,000 rand and He will give me far more. Stop confusing the scripture with money or material possessions because it's His riches in glory He's speaking about. And he says, uh, uh, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Please go read the scripture again when you, get, when you have quiet time, before you go sleep tonight, tomorrow morning early. Read the scripture again, Ephesians 3. And experience what God wants to do and say to you through that. God delights in you. He really delights in you. And He wants that delight that He delights over you to be a delight to Him. Because He's a great God. Let's pray together. Father... I don't know today who's going through what. I don't know today who's struggling. I don't know today who is, is really uh, 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 going through a time where they're not sure what I, what, what, which way to go. But today we come to you and we come and we pray because your word says that you will give us far more abundantly than what we can ask. And so we ask for joy and we trust you for abundantly more joy in our innermost beings. We trust you that you will fill us with the fullness of your presence. And in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy. We trust you that you will fill us with your joy, your fullness, your presence, your being inside of us. And that you will give us more than we can think to ask. So that we can live our lives victorious. So that we can live our lives that when people see us, doesn't matter what we're going through, when they look at us, they see Jesus Christ radiantly uh, 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 flowing through us. Because you, not because of us, but because of you, Lord, that have filled us with your abundance of grace, with your abundance of the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ. And as we enter into a time of worship, and as we enter into a time where we can experience your presence here today, we come and we pray, Lord, as we worship you, as we lift up our hands to you, as we focus on the one that we worship, there where we need it, according to your word, will you come today and fill us with your joy so that we will receive strength to go on, to move on, and to live in the victory despite what we see in the natural. My prayer today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.